Namo Pemo is an international online event for painting model horses in the month of February. Formerly the National Model Painting Month, this year it rebranded into the International Model Horse Painting Party. For 2023, there were no rules whatsoever, so I chose one of my biggest works in progress as my main horse in the hopes of finishing him in February. I've said that before though, so let's see if I can actually finish him on time. This is a chill vlog about a chill painting month. Aside from the Mawari Stallion, I'm hoping to finish a few other works in progress. Including two medallions or bas relief sculptures which I sculpted myself. Oh, and the Spire Custom. Today I need to lighten and warm up the Mawari. His airbrush base coat was almost black, and my intention is dark chestnut, or liver chestnut as it's also known. Today I'm experimenting with a new oil painting medium, Galkid Light, for use in creating glaze. This medium is similar to the Linquin that I've talked about before, though this one is much thinner and fluid. See? To make a glaze, I mix about one part oil to about three parts paint. Ideally, it should be transparent paint, but eh, I'm fudging a little. Light paint loads are key for keeping model horses smooth and free of brush strokes. Really little. See how it just barely coats the tip of the brush? That's plenty. Oil painting model horses does have a learning curve because there are key factors for success that's very counterintuitive to traditional art practices. For example, I was taught to use a lot of paint for thick textural brush strokes for canvas art. So just how little paint it takes to paint a model horse really took me by surprise when I first started. Soft brushes are also so key to a smooth finish. Funny enough, I found I needed to avoid actual oil painting brushes like those hog hair brushes or the synthetic hog hair. Those have been great for textural canvas projects, yet for model horses I found softer brushes better, such as watercolor brushes, sable, synthetics like Taclong, and even makeup brushes. The brush I'm using here is a synthetic mongoose. I've spent so many long hours researching brush types and learned that mongoose brushes have soft tips but are also stiff, so great for pushing around heavier paint like oil paint. I wanted to try a synthetic version to see if it would give me the stiffer action of an oil painting brush that I'm used to, but still have soft enough tips for smooth blending on model horses. I'm happy to report these synthetic mongoose brushes I brought from Civil Brush do just that. Painting with acrylics has taught me to work fast, so I can usually paint a horse this large in one session. I stop as soon as the paint starts to feel tacky so I don't create texture or lift any layers. As soon as I feel tack, I stop and I let it dry for a couple days. Ooh, now we're talking, finally looking like a proper chestnut. And I painted this mare too. This was a good day. Day two of Namo Pemo, I received some pony mail. Pewter Micro is a fox trotting mare sculpted by Maggie Bennett Sculpture. Eee, look at that tail detail. Mm -mm. Days 3 through 13, I did not paint at all. Day 14, I had the free time to paint for a bit. I pulled out one of my favorite painting books as it had some color recipes for mixing black paint without using black paint. These recipes were different than the primary color recipes I was taught for making a black paint, so I wanted to try some of these. First up is Cadmium Red Medium with Ultramarine Blue. Equal parts was more of a deep brown, but a little more blue quickly turned it into a midnight purple toned black.
Next was Ultramarine Blue with Burnt Sienna, which was lovely right off the bat. The first mix was more purple toned and the second mix was more orange toned. The book mentioned using Burnt Umber to deepen the darkness of the mixtures and sure enough, it's dark. Since all three mixtures have lots of warmth and color variety, either make for great shadow colors to add depth to muscles and bring extra attention to details. Painting it on thinly makes it easy to keep it looking soft and subtle. Day 15, I used the custom black paint mixtures to paint the shadows and details on the Moari stud. And by the way, if you also love books and you're curious about oil painting, my final recommendation is this book. It has a lot of bite-sized info about oil painting, such as what colors take longer to cure, and oil painting is about a third of the book. The rest of the book is dedicated to other painting media, drawing, and professional practices like archivability, the latter of which can come in handy for model horse painting. That's the chapter that will help you make your model painting last longer. Day 16 through 26, I did not paint again, but I did paint on day 27. This video is a fair look into how often I paint as a hobbyist. Rarely do I paint every day, and rather, when I do paint, it's when I have some moments of free time. This free time is often divided among other interests and time with friends and family, so while I try to paint as often and regularly as I can, it's rarely daily. And I think it's a good balance for me, honestly. I still paint regularly enough to notice growth, and more importantly, I feel like those little moments of time are still enough to experiment and explore with paint. Setting aside regular moments of time to explore and experiment, even if it's just 15 minutes a week, I have found to be my secret recipe to my own personal artistic growth. And I think that's something tremendous I've learned as well, and it took me a long time to learn it fully and truly understand it. Practice and growth looks different for everyone. It's up to us to find out what each artistic path looks like for each of us. And I will leave you with that thought. I hope this video brought a little joy to your day, and I'll let you get back to it. Bye! I am still painting all of these.